Welcome to the Three Haunted Podcast, where we bring you all things horror, supernatural, folklore, mythology, and all things that go bump in the night. Hey guys, this is your co-host Ashley Lunar Goddess, guerrilla girl filmmaker and horror-loving cinephile. I'm just your average pun-making swearwolf that loves to explore the spookier things in life. I'm your co-host John Thomas, paranormal investigator, super smartass, and film lover extraordinaire. What's up, goals, gals, and all my geeks of horror pals? In today's episode, we have the awesome Rob Moreira. Rob is a successful voiceover actor, a down-to-earth New York City boy. In Rob's words, forget about it. <laughs> that was good. That was that was pretty New York. Forget about it. I think you do it better. There you go. Hey, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't doesn't get more New York than that. Unless you want to, unless you order a coffee, in which case you're ordering a coffee. <laughs> coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but first, a word from our network sponsor. Are you looking for more awesome podcasts? Head on over to withoutyourhead.com for access to the Without Your Head podcast network, where you'll find a variety of podcasts sure to keep you entertained and coming back for more. All right, Jonathan Thomas, <laughs> bring us back. Welcome back, everybody. Like Ashley said, we have the awesome, amazing Rob joining us tonight. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Moreira. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying that. Sorry. <laughs> I just had to yeah. try it again. I have to redeem that was good. it. That until was it good. feels like no. really good. That's good. I mean, considering how badly it's been butchered, that's like you're basically saying it perfect. I mean, it's been butchered to hell. <laughs> I'll take the basic. I'll be that basic witch. Moriaira. Moriaira. <laughs> Maria, Marie, I'm like, Maria, what? Rob Maria. Yeah, <laughs> Rob you get some bad ones. Or they, like just blatantly wrong, like Morales? It's like, <laughs> just added letters. All right, right? Just, 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 I don't even know where to go with it's that like, There's no L or S in there, but all right, sure. It's all right. We got Spider-Man with us. Sweet. <laughs> then, all right. <laughs> then that's when you just start being called Miles, and it's like, that's not even my name. Like, yeah. what is it? Yo, Miles. <laughs> It's like, is that are you, is it me? You talking to me? Damn. <laughs> is it me? Right. Go get a coffee. Now? Gotta get a coffee. Forget about it. I love it. So I'll be honest. I've worked with a lot of East Coast people, and I love listening to East Coast people talk. And I will, like, lean into it and just watch their mouths to figure out, like, how oh, the hell yeah. did you say that? And it's great. It's interesting, too, because, like, it, 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 in our little cluster, because, you know, everybody, you know, pe- people think about New York and they usually just think about New York City right. as opposed to New York State, you know. <laughs> but you, it, within the little, like, you know, 20 miles that is New York City and Long Island, there's, like, 12 accents. It's, like, ridiculous. Like, there is a Queensness, a Brooklynness, a Bronxness. There's a Lower East Side specifically of the city, and there's an Upper east or west side kind of affectation to the way people speak and same thing with long island yeah it's 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 crazy so captain america was right <laughs> oh yeah no it's crazy you could tell you could tell like almost like borough wise where people are from in new york city it's it's that specific if you're from new york city because anybody else if it all sounds the same. yeah if you were born here natives is where you see you hear the accents at this point like you can that's how you know who's a new york native because we got a lot of transplants now so the, the 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 specific accent is kind of like dissipating so you can tell when people are faking it too yeah, I mean, usually it's when somebody doesn't have a very obvious accent and they, and they, you know, and then they complain about people who are like not real New Yorkers. It's like, are you a real New Yorker? Well, no, but I've lived here for like seven years. I'm basically <laughs> a real New Yorker. It's like, you don't get to own that. You weren't born here. You don't own that. <laughs> I mean, but they pay the New York prices, don't they? <laughs> hey, they pay the prices, but they don't get the. Uh, they 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 weren't they weren't raised there. If you weren't they didn't raised do the there, hustles. don't count. They didn't go to yeah. the primary schools, right? Exactly. You weren't cutting <laughs> classes and going to arcades like we did. It's not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> it's 
not the same. Oh, um, not the same. See, now you know why I like Rob. He cracks me up. Like <laughs> we we met because John's gonna ask, "How did you guys?" Meet? Oh yes, I know. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, Rob and I met at SAC Anime. He was brought in as a voiceover actor talent. I was there with a different voiceover actor talent, um, being more of like a, a rep. That was that was cool. Then what was the who was the show you were coming with that they brought you specifically uh, it, for? Which it anime? was called uh, uh, Fena Pirate Princess. It was an uh, anime on Toonami, uh, on uh, yeah, on the, uh, the Adult Swim block of a uh, Toonami on Cartoon Network. Um, and it was cool at the, at the time the show already had been, uh, I think we're, I think we had just celebrated its year basically of it being out. Um, and they got everybody in the cast together cause the, the Fena was the main character, but we were all kind of a crew and they actually brought the whole cast out, uh, which was interesting because a lot of us were, it was, it was kind of split. Half of us were West coast, half of us were East coast. But even those on those coasts, we never saw each other because we recorded it all during the pandemic. So we didn't actually meet until the convention. That was the first time we ever met in person, all of us. So it was really interesting because it was kind of like, ah, you have a face in real life. Look at you. You're a real person. You're not a robot AI thing. You're actually a human being. So, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. I think you could tell. Because, like, watching all of you get together in the mornings, oh. like, at the hotel, you just a big crowd. And they're like, hey! And it's oh, super yeah. fast. It wasn't, like, people that have worked together for 30 years and they're, like, sick of each other. It no. was, <laughs> like, it's and my that's buddy. The thing, a lot of us, yeah, we all kind of, like, ran in the same circles. But it, it was the first project that we all did where we all kind of felt like close to each other usually you do a show like that and you're kind of like all right it's done and then you just you know move to the next one uh but this one like after it was done there was such a big love from the fans and uh and then just through us like just we just all like clicked really well which is hard to do considering there is you know there's eight of us it's like it's hard to get eight personalities that all jive together like that's that's kind of unheard of that was pretty cool but it worked out it was cool it was cool it was dope yeah, and, and to your point, like the voiceover community, especially like in the U.S., it's not it's not huge. Like there are a lot of no. people, but it's not as big as people think it is. And so Mm-mm. it was, yeah. So you all hear of each other, or know of each other at some point, I'm sure. Right. But finally, getting to meet had to be exciting. Uh, yeah, and also you know be in a project together too, because. Um, um, Brittany Cox, who was Fena in it, like I had heard of her and I knew her work. So being in a project with her and also be basically her guy was like, oh, snap, like talk about a hell of a I- intro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, what's up? I love your work. By the way, I, we're love interests, apparently. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> I'm your boyfriend now, Heather. Um, so- <laughs> I'm your daddy. <laughs> I'm your daddy. I'm your daddy now, girl. <laughs> oh my goodness! And it's that kind of show now. See, it just works. Oh yeah. <laughs> I remember too, because like when you go to these shows, especially for the shows that aren't like super huge, they don't really separate like the the professionals and the talent from like the uh, the con goers. Like at hotels, mm. they usually just kind of keep the hotels. This is where we have space blocked out. So. Yeah. I remember I was like, I'm going to go to the gym every day. It's going to be great. I'm going to keep that fitness journey going. And I went to the gym the first day that, like, the first morning I was staying there. And um, it was empty other than this lady who was on a bicycle. And she had, like, zero expression on her face. The angry lady. Yeah. She was, like, she ooh. pissed. She was She was like, it. why am I here? And she wouldn't make eye contact, but she was like, I'm going to get it. And so I'm in there with her for a while, and then Rob came in at some point. And you don't assume, like, this is downtown Sacramento. You don't assume this is a convention goer. This is going to be someone, you know, who's attending SAC Anime. And so he comes in, and we're all working up a sweat, and we're getting it. And it's just, like, power. Um, Even Angry Lady. I remember I had accidentally left one of my Bluetooths. So I had left. Like, I left. He was still getting his sweat on. And... I came back like, it, I don't know, 45 minutes later because I'm like, I can't find my Bluetooth case. It's got to be in there somewhere. I had to leave it at the gym. And this gym, by the way, was fucking weird because it's a hotel gym, but you had to go outside of the hotel and up the block 
yeah, to get to the gym. It was weird. I was so confused. <laughs> I was like, is this really part of the hotel? This seems... Like, I'm going to a gym. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. I like. I think we just left. Like, this is not part of the – this is not connected to the hotel. We went up half the block. But I was like, all right, this is the hotel gym. The key worked. So here we go. But I remember I had to go all the way back to get my blue teeth case, walk in, and now the gym's packed. And yeah. he's still in there with his friends, and they are having, like – they are cheering each other on. And it's oh, like yeah. a party in there. They're like <laughs> – people are lifting, and they're like, whoop, whoop. And it's, I know it was like a full event. I'm like, where was this when I was here? God damn. Right. That's the way it should be, though. Like, seriously, everybody just <laughs> getting oh, everybody yeah. pumped. Fuck yeah. yeah. And they uh, were, they were, out. yeah, they were hyped. They were having like, a good I don't work out quiet, man. I want to like bang things and yell at each other and smack right? each other, like lift heavier. <laughs> and they were smacking each other. It was hilarious. And I was like, this, this is awesome. And of course he sees me and he's like, she's back in here. And I'm like, I left my Bluetooth case. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I grabbed it and took off. Like, off I go. Yeah. And, and then later in the day, I remember, I don't even know. Was it that night I was sitting in the hotel? Yeah, and- yeah. It was, it was like later that afternoon or something. Like, we were just kind of all hanging out. I remember I was hanging out with everybody. And and I we had that acknowledging, like, Look at like, each other. I, I, like, yeah, like I see you, and and we're, you're seeing me. We're seeing each other, and we know who we are. And then it got to that point where like we held a little too long, and it was like, well, now I gotta say something. Now, it's just, now we're just kind of staring at each other. This is just weird. We held so it too long. Yeah, we're just like, uh, the, the, okay, the, the the look of recognition went beyond the point of like normal. So <laughs> way so to make it awkward, like, Rob. <laughs> I know, it, I know. It was just like if I don't say anything, then it's weird. Because then I, I, I didn't want you to end up thinking like, like walking away, like, wow, that guy just stared at me for a while. It's not like he didn't know who I was, weirdo. You know what I mean? You don't have to know who I am. I'm like a nobody. But I don't know. But that's how you meet new people. <laughs> It was funny. Yeah, and he yeah. came up because so I had been sitting there waiting. I, I had escorted some of our like the company I was working for that weekend, I escorted some of their talent back to the hotel and I was waiting for some of the others to come back down because we were going to do something else. And I'm sitting there on the, like the, you know, the lobby has like those couches in most hotels. So I'm sitting on the couch and then I see this whole group and it's a, it's rowdy. They're having fun. They're happy. And I'm like, that is such a happy group. And then I saw him and I'm like, Oh, Hey, that's the dude from the gym. They were getting rowdy earlier. <laughs> and it's, it was fun. They have such a happy infectious vibe. You can't help but smile. Cool. And that's probably why he's like, why is she staring at me so much? And I'm like, <laughs> they're, they're having so much fun. I'm like, I want to be a part of that group. How do I get in with that squad? They're, oh they're like squad. Goals, and, oh, um, yeah. and then he came over and he's like, "Okay, this is the third time I've seen you today, and if I see someone three times, I have to say hello." Gotta say hi. Makes complete sense. And I was like, "What's up? Can I be a part of your squad? <laughs> <laughs> can I party with you? I want to party we, with Can we can we lift weights and yell at each other and slap each other? Because that'd be cool." <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's how all friendships start: smacking and having a great time, right? lifting weights. That's how my friendships start. But um, Sounds about right. Damn right. I know we're gonna get to horror at some point, but like <laughs> no like his story is pretty cool because I saw him the next day at the gym again and that lady on the bike, she actually smiled at me. Like I walked oh. in and, and she's like hardcore on the bike making a face again, and I'm just like, oh, mm. and then I walk by and she made eye contact with me, and this time she actually smiled and I'm like <gasps> <laughs> it's gonna she be thought the a same good thing. Day. She thought <laughs> she, the same thing. She was just like, oh, "Will we recognize each other now?" It'd be rude if I didn't. It'd be rude smile. not to. Exactly. Yeah, no, then weird. it'd be awkward. Yeah. yeah. Then it would be awkward. Yeah. She was. So she ended up smiling. But um, I remember he was already there, and I got on the treadmill next to him, and I'm like, "I'm so tired. I don't even want to be here." But we ended up amping each other up. It's like we got this. Yeah. One more. One more. You got it. Push. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, man. And, uh, just like, I wish I could have him at the gym all the time with me, but um, <laughs> Rob here told me an awesome story about his journey. Would you be cool sharing your, your journey over, like, COVID and yeah. your fitness? Because that I thought that was hella inspiring. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, uh, I, when I, it was 2020, it was August of 2020, and it was, um, I, I was uh, 363 pounds at the time. Uh, rather large fella, and um, 
Uh, I had no medical issues or anything. There was nothing wrong with me. Doctor was like, you're fine. You should, you know, at some point you should look to lose some weight, but you're young, you know, you, you got time, but your time's a wasting. <laughs> um, in uh, August of that year, uh, there was no rhyme or reason. Nothing spurred it. It was literally like the middle of the night, and I just decided, like, you know what? Kind of had enough of this. Maybe I should lose some weight. I had done it before. So I was kind of like, now's the time. I don't know what it was, but something just like, like just a switch turned on in my head. And um, between August of 2020 till about, uh, yeah, up till August of 2021, I lost 90 pounds at, in, that, in, that, uh, in that year. And then from 21 to now 22, I lost another 40 pounds. So I'm down 130 total at the moment. Um, and it was just, you know, starting off, starting off incredibly slow. And, uh, you know, just focusing on what I was going to eat, um, not eating like a jerk is, it was kind of my rule. Stop eating like a jerk. <laughs> um, actually make proper choices. I need to put that on a sticker for myself. Yeah, Stop eating is. like don't, a jerk. Don't, yeah, don't eat like a jerk. You know, it, it's a lot easier than we think. Ultimately, everybody knows how to lose weight if they want to. We just choose not to. That, that's really what it is. It is a choice. You can choose. Um, so I just chose to change my overall lifestyle and how I ate and how I operated. And I started really just with the food aspect. That's the, really the easiest one because the exercising is not the fun part. That's the hard <laughs> part. Um, but the one really where you lose the weight is the eating. You know, people tend to get that confused. They think it's just working out is where you lose weight. It's really how you eat that's going to have you lose weight. Exercising just tones everything out and shapes you up, hence the body building. Like that is actually what happens to your body. Your body does physically transform if you stay consistent. So I went from just eating uh, g better for, I did that for maybe like two months, maybe three months. And then I introduced exercises and I was only doing, two, you know, two workouts a week then three, then I did four. And at the moment I work out anywhere between five to six times a week, twice a day. Yeah. You're a kick, like a kickboxing. Awesome. I don't yeah. even know how to say it. Like you're just a kickboxing, kickboxing. Yeah. I can't even say it. Look, tongue twister, kickboxing <laughs> ass kicker. There we go. <laughs> there you Woo. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Words. What are they? Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of weightlifting, a lot of hit and cardio, and uh, and kickboxing. Uh, Thai kickboxing is really what I do the most. So uh, at the moment, I'm gearing myself up to lose an extra forty pounds because hopefully I would like to get in the ring next year at some point. So we'll see. that'd be awesome. You have a you also worked with a trainer, right, to build up like your running endurance. Yes, yes. I had a personal trainer at the gym. Um, I was with her for about six months, and she we did a lot of uh, a lot of uh, upper body training um, because my as as she discovered my my push strength was was really good chest and triceps, but my pull strength was much less developed. My back and my biceps. So that's what we ended up working on, uh, so that I actually, I can actually do pull-ups. That was the only workout that I I was never able to do. I could do push-ups. I could do sit-ups. My core is incredible. But when it came to pulling myself up, I couldn't do it. So if I was on a cliff, I was going to die. So I was just like, all right, goal. <laughs> I need to be able to Don't pull die. myself up if I'm on a cliff. Don't die. That was literally my goal. So now I'm up to three pull-ups clean at the moment. Ooh, so that's a big wins, deal. Small wins. That's huge. It's huge. It was huge for me. Um, so yeah, so I'm at three Hoping to push to 10. <laughs> yeah, I, I have the reverse problem. I have weak push, <laughs> mad pull. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I was when she told me that, I was like, oh, I mm -hmm. didn't know that's how we broke it up. But there you go. <laughs> it's, it's a thing. Different muscle yeah. groups. Taking it from the front but, to the back of the body or reverse. It's just, yeah. it all has to work together. Yeah. So it took a while. It's been it's been over two years now. But and it's a you know, it's a process. Every day's every day's a challenge. You know, every meal is a challenge. Getting up to work out again, especially that second time around is always a challenge. You know, it's it's always it's always it's a constant battle. But, you know, it's really just about how can you self motivate yourself? Uh, and, you know, once you do once you do it enough, you kind of realize like, man, I really did make a difference. Like I totally look different from what I did you know, literally only two years ago. It's not a long time, really, when you consider it. And when you see the differences, you know, from one 
picture to the other, it's like, holy crap, it's like a totally different person. And the things that I'm able to do now, I was never able to do, even when I was thinner. So I'm thinner and I'm stronger. So it's like, I just understand my body more now. There's a really uh, big cool. mental transformation too that oh, goes yeah. on like, holy shit, I am capable of stuff that I didn't think I could be capable of. And like, I can do this. I believe in myself. And I like myself. I like the way I feel. I like that I'm capable. Like there, there's a lot I feel yeah. like that happens in that journey. So yeah, yeah, 100%. I think the most amazing thing is that, you know, whenever I posted about it, you know, I posted it just to, just for like my own accountability, but at the same time, you know, people were seeing me and they were kind of asking questions. So I was like, oh, maybe I should put it out there because it's not like I lost 10 pounds. Like I lost, uh, you know, I lost a, a, an adult. I lost an adult person's worth of weight. You know what I mean? So, so that's why I started posting about it. And when I started posting about it, I didn't realize how many people were actually watching what I was doing when I posted. They never commented. They would like. But I didn't realize how many people were paying attention. One and two were using me as the reason why they started to do what they did. So, like, I had family members that were like, yeah, you know, I lost, like, 20, 30 pounds. Like, like thanks for posting. And it was just so interesting how many people have been like, man, you're so inspiring. And I'm like... I would never have, if had you never said it, I never would have known. You know, I, I, for, to me, it's like, I'm just posting into the ether. And if somebody sees it, cool. If somebody doesn't, whatever, it's all good. It's more like I'm posting for me just for my own tracking you know, your journey. track. Yeah, just my own tracking. Um, but I didn't realize how many people were being affected by it at the same time, which was really interesting. There's a lot of lurkers out there. Yeah, it's, a lot of lurkers. <laughs> speaking of lurkers, it's spooky season, baby. There's oh yeah! All the spookiness out. So it's the best time of the year. One of the things we talked about on the treadmill was how much we love horror. <laughs> oh, that yeah. doesn't surprise me. That's got to come up all the everywhere time. I go. Especially everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. Hell you yeah! That's that's my like gauge of people. Like the litmus test of people is right. Hate you like horror, and if someone's like, "No, I hate it," and I'm like, "We're not going to get along." Peace out. See ya. Yep. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. You know, that, and, and, you know, for me, it's like, it, it, it's also a good gauge depending on what kind of movies they've seen. What kind of horror is like on their resume? You know, right. what's on your horror resume? And I feel like that also like says the kind of person you are. Cause like, if you look at somebody, you're kind of like, oh, Halloween. Yeah. Great movie. And then you're like inside. And if like, you don't get like, and if you don't get a, yeah, like oh what's that it's like oh all right, all right. <laughs> okay i know where you're at i know See where, where they're at on the is. scale yeah exactly exactly so i think i think that's always good or the the ones that are like i love horror i like hocus pocus it's like oh it's like oh yeah uh -huh. you like <laughs> oh i like the pet oh oh, oh you're so you're, you're so, so new. pretty you're, yeah, so, you're pretty. so new to this i'm so <laughs> precious so <laughs> I That's know. when you take those and then you make them watch something really fucked up and see if they can oh, handle yeah. it. It's like, this is a really great movie. It's tame. It's called Martyrs, but you'll enjoy it. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're traumatizing then, people? Boom. Why not? Minds melted. Yes. Minds melted, hearts broken, minds. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's an experience. Martyrs is not yes. for the, uh, like... Casual that's, that's, horror movie. It's a rough watch. Person. Yeah, that's a yeah. rough watch. You have to be prepared to sit and watch that. Yeah, you have to be like, there are a few movies out there that you just have to be prepared for because they are going to fuck you up. Oh, Martyrs yeah. is by far one of those like top oh, yeah. ones that it's like, I don't recommend that to people unless it's like, <laughs> no. How many years have you been watching horror? It exactly. actually, I just gauge it out. Like, so how did you do with the Saw movies? Oh man, those were hard. Don't watch Martyrs. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Don't go beyond that. Not that they're right. the equivalent, but if you can't stomach Saw, there's yeah. no way in hell you're going to be able to like stomach Martyrs no. at all. Oh, hell no. So, <laughs> that's hell that's no. just where I'm like, how'd you do with Saw? Uh, oh man, that's a that good one. That's awful. a good question. That's actually yeah. a great gauge. That's a great gauge. <laughs> that's a good Definitely. marker because I would say that's probably what, like, the higher end of like d regular domestic horror. I'd say that's probably like the hardest, I think. Yeah, when we come to like that visceral kind of 
torture horror, not even torture, but just, you know, like the gory torture kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, the gory stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's like on the higher end of that. So if like you can stomach yeah. that, try Martyrs. But if it's like, man, I couldn't do it, then. Stay away. Martyrs yeah, is away. not the film for you. Watch Hocus no. Pocus. <laughs> Watch Hocus Pocus. There you go. <laughs> Hocus Pocus. And I know Martyrs wow. is one of your favorites. So it is. what it is, is it that it like is. you love about that? Like why is that one of your favorites? Is it because it fucks you up? <laughs> well, that. That. Um I f- the reason for the the reason for why everything that transpired transpired, I think, is like crazy. You know, what they do with it, with the information, with I mean the fact that the lady like like she heard she got the information she wanted and even then realized this was something we can't handle we can't handle. <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> like that's like that's so wild to me because it plays with uh it plays with the idea of the unknown what did she hear what was she told what did you know what what was it that she saw um so i feel like that's really i, I that that's a play on the unknown that i actually really enjoy that and I feel like sometimes horror movies suffer from the the thirty to thirty five minute uh, build up, and sometimes that build up is slow or boring. Or and you and and I and I and I don't know about you guys, but sometimes there's some movies where I watch them, uh, oh, horror movies that I watch them, and I'm going like, uh, okay, when where's the first kill? The minute that I say that, I feel like mm, this 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 movie's a little slow. It's a little slow for me. Um, and Martyrs doesn't do that. You're lucky if you get five minutes before the first gunshot gets done. And I'm like, yeah, all right. I like this. Like, we, we hit the track running. Um, so, I, so I actually really appreciated that. And then smack in the middle after everything in the house transpired, you got a moment to breathe between, obviously, you know, the lead then getting trapped herself. There was like a moment to breathe and, and, and kind of, wonder okay wait where's this going oh yeah there is more movie and a lot (laughs) more movie yeah we're only yeah it's like there's a lot of movie left wait where is this going (laughs) and i like that there was that nice hard turn it it almost feels like two movies it's like two it, it feels like two short films um and it's just bridged together by that little like piece of meat in the middle you know to give you that final big blast at the end uh i just think overall like the writing was spot on it was just so well done it was incredibly well shot the the horror was when you when you can feel it in your gut you know that they like they're doing some really good effects some really good practical effects there they got Uh, you so yeah yeah it was just there was just so there was so much it was just there i can only sing its praises there you know i feel like a lot of horror movies you can find a handful of things that you probably didn't like i feel like that's a movie that it's hard to find what you couldn't like like you really gotta dig to find something bad about that film yeah, and I'm with you because I think that, like, with that one, it's any film that comes out the gate swinging when they hit hard, um, mm-hmm. you have to be able to know when to pace that down because you start so yeah. intense. Like, to really get yeah. people on that roller coaster, right? Bring them up, take For them sure. down, bring them up, pace it out. And so that one did really well with that. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, because I feel like there are films that will start, like, just swinging right out the gate. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah, I do too. It's just when they stay hard hitting the entire time, you're exhausted by the end, right? When it's just like exactly, and you don't want that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, And I feel like Martyrs did a really good job of not doing that. They knew when to like ease up off the gas just enough and then hit it again. And so I really enjoyed that. Yeah, for sure. Still a fucked up movie. (laughs) Oh, one hundred (laughs) percent. What's another favorite of yours? I love how meta Cabin in the Woods is. I, I, I like that is it, like that is such a meta movie. I, I, I love that. Like it knows what it is. It knows what it is and it plays with the themes of horror. And I like that it kind of like twists it around on its head to give you a completely unique experience because nobody else can make a movie like that at this point. Like it's been done. Like the gag's been done. You can't make more movies that play like that. You know what I mean? Um but I, I I I really enjoy how that how that movie played out. I think another one in that vein where it kind of plays with the genre was uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. I thought that movie was genius. It was I'm like this 
this isn't like Sam Raimi funny where it's still scary, but it but but funny like this purposely knows it's trying to be comedic with its mm-hmm. horror, and I appreciate that. I really enjoyed that, and also playing with the with the you know the horror tropes of people being so freaked out that they walk into their own demises. I thought was so genius. I was like, this is amazing. These like you know the 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 killer in the movie is the horror tropes of these victims. I thought that was kind of funny. There was no killer. They're doing it to themselves. Yeah, I thought that was so smart. Like that was so so intelligent. And I I, I like I like movies like that that are just yeah. Those I feel like those are fun because they're kind of playing with what horror movies are. And I thought that was really cool. I love horror movies like that though. Like there is you know there's a there's a space for them and I love it. There was one um I don't even remember what it's called, but it was on demand and it was about zombies. And normally I'm not really, like, I don't gravitate. That's not my first choice, but it was about zombies. And it was it was one of those zombie movies where it's set in, like, this ghost town of, like, or small town and zombies take over. But it's so funny. And it's not, like, accidentally funny. Like, this is so poorly done that it can't be funny. Like you said, they're trying to be funny, and yeah. they're they know le- what they're doing. Yeah, they're leaning that. into the comedy. Like I think at some point, like there's music playing as the zombies are swarming the house, and then they stop and do like basically a flash mob dance. <laughs> and at some point, they invoke a part of like the thriller dance for just a moment, and then it's like, oh, oh my god, god, before they attack, really? and it's like, oh my god, That's this is cool. hilarious. And the the fact that the characters. <laughs> Because you're thinking, okay, how are they going to play that off? And the, the main mm-hmm. characters that are locked in the house themselves are like, are they dancing? Why are those dancies? I didn't know zombies could dance. Why are the zombies <laughs> dancing? And, oh, God. and so then you're laughing even harder because they're acknowledging how absurd that is that there are zombies dancing. Um, it's so funny. <laughs> you're going to have to figure out what the hell that's called because now I kind of want to watch it. At first, I was thinking it was uh, Cooties with Elijah Wood, but that's a whole different thing. That movie was weird too, but I kind of liked it. But yeah, you'll definitely have to try to figure that out because I want to watch whatever the hell that was. Yeah, I, I, I know as soon as I like awesome. find it, I will, I, I'll send it to you. As soon as I see it, I'll have to Google and see if I can find it because. What I basically do is I'm an insomniac. And so while everyone else is asleep, I will just randomly sort through, like, go on demand. It's kind of like your blockbuster, right? Go and pick all the movies. So I'm like, okay, I already watched that one. Not going to watch that and just go through. Mm -hmm. Whatever pops up. And that happened to be one that popped up back in the day. And I was like, sure, let's go with it. And (laughs) I was laughing so hard. Like, yeah, I don't normally do zombies, but this is hilarious. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm. I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of zombied out myself. Like, you know, they, 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 don't get me wrong. There are some gems that are out there, but after a while, it's kind of like, oh, it's a, another zombie esque movie. Okay, I get it. Like, <laughs> I, I, I guess I kind of know where that's going. That's how I feel with all the Exorcism movies anymore. It's oh, like now man. after the Exorcist, I'm just like, and the Exorcism of Emily Rose. That one was one of my favorites. That one scared <laughs> yeah, the shit was, out of me. But like, yeah, yeah. that one was really good. <laughs> but yeah, you kind of you kind of go like, all right, people getting possessed again. Things are gonna go flying around again. Somebody's gonna yeah. talk in a weird ancient language again. Okay, <laughs> like what else are we gonna like? You could write a movie. You know, sounds yeah. like a Friday yeah. night in my house. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Heads are spinning. Um, oh, God. I think, I'm going to have to look it up, but I think it's The Dead Can't Dance is what it's called, but I will have to double check. But it's so random. Like, I don't even know. There's also one called The Dead Don't Die. That's with uh, <laughs> the Bill dead Murray. But that was die. slow. That was a slow one. But uh, mm. the previews made it look really good. It was, it was okay. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I also like what I really enjoy is like finding ones that, you know, pe- like you, you don't get a lot of fanfare, but like end up being way better than you thought. And I think it's because you go in with such a low bar because you're like, ah, nobody's talking about this crap. This can't be any good. Right. And then you watch it. You're like, whoa, this is actually way better than I anticipated. That happened to me with Oculus. 
You guys, yes, you, you guys that was Oculus? such a great movie. My daughter and I, so we good. loved that movie. I'm actually with you on that. I didn't think it was going to be good. And then I finally caved in and watched it on one of those Amazing. insomnia nights. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I was yeah, wrong. I was like, Hold on. I was like, this yeah. is way too good. I was like, did I come in with too low a bar? Because this <laughs> was way better than I, I thought. I said it too like, low. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I said the bar way too low. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I originally watched it for Karen Gillan, so I love her. Yeah. She's oh, I don't blame I, you. I think for redheads and she's, you know, what Scottish too. So it's like right fuck, there with boom. you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, so the, I, I I really appreciated Oculus. I was I, I was I was very very surprised at that movie. I like finding movies like that like by accident. Yes. You know that it's kind of like well it says horror. I guess I'll press play <laughs> and then it finishes and you're like thank God I pressed play. Right. What was I thinking? I should have seen this ages ago. And that also happened to me with uh, the Babadook. Oh okay. Uh, see, I wasn't a fan. That one I really enjoyed. I uh, but. Uh, but I, I appreciate a good monster under your bed story. I, I, I liked that. But spir- spirits and stuff like that or like things that are kind of seen but not seen don't always grab me. I think I appreciated it because I didn't know that's where it was going. Right. So I didn't have a preconceived notion. You have to do it effectively it's with monsters yeah. that you cannot see. Even with the monsters you can't see, no matter what you're doing. Monsters you can see, those have to be done well because if they look like too CGI or they look too, yeah, too I guess animated, then it's like this is a fucking cartoon. But mm-hmm. when you get, that's why I miss. Side note: Practical effect monsters because those, it's like, oh, that looks super real. All right, I'm into it. That's a monster, but um, I don't know. I watched a film a while ago that they did both. There were two monsters in the house. Uh-huh. One was practical effects, and you could tell, and it's like, oh, that's scary. That's oh yeah. And then the other one, I don't know why, but they had CGI'd it completely. And so it felt animated. And so I felt like I kept crossing over in the same movie between like a horror film and like yeah. a Goosebumps, like Nickelodeon oh, film. And I'm like, this is a mess. Like, yeah, you should have just good. picked one because it really only like the CGI one really only highlighted just how strong the practical one looked. But then it also yeah. made the other one look really cartoony. So speaking of cartoons, and I'm going to get grief for this one and I don't care. But Scooby Doo on Zombie Island was a freaky ass fucking cartoon. <laughs> they did so good on that one. I'm like, holy amazing. shit, they made Scooby Doo scary. Like, what the hell? But so <laughs> amazing. And that's like amazing. 1991 or 2000 something. I can't remember, but it was. <laughs> yes, watch it. <laughs> props, props to the mystery man, yes. mystery man. <laughs> I'm all about that's the Scooby amazing. Gang. But were you high when you were watching that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at it's all. like that was oh that was God. mad scary. Oh man, <laughs> Judy was creepy, man. <laughs> I mean, there's stuff that creeps me out that probably shouldn't, but like the zombies, my unnatural fear mm. of zombies is like makes zero sense to me because I don't believe like there's gonna be some zombie apocalypse or my next door neighbor's gonna be like brains, but um, <laughs> it just there's something that fucks with me. So who knows? Maybe in my subconscious, <laughs> I believe it can happen. But I'm ready, man. I am archery trained. I am all sorts of like, you name it. (laughs) I didn't get archery trained for that. (laughs) Sure you didn't. I didn't. I just like archery. I just did it for fun. Nobody believes you. (laughs) (laughs) Nobody believes you. Yes, because I learned how to throw a hatchet because I thought it was cool. Have you you done tomahawk throwing? That's really fun. Hell yeah. That would Hell be fun. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> like it's a lot of like fun. I, you know, you do it to a point. It's like you know what? Ten shots. I hit about eight bullseyes. Zombies ain't getting within ten feet of me. Right? right? <laughs> eight? They're not. They're not getting near me. <laughs> the other two, you know. Hopefully, somebody. You know. Hopefully, you're there with someone you know, else. Takes it out. You know, exactly. doing some Legolas action. You know. <laughs> Legolas. Keep the other two away from me. You know? Oh, up high, Legolas. I like that. No, just just so you know, after those eight, I mean, we're all screwed because I just threw my only like ten tomahawks. So we gotta go get done. it out of them. Take the heads off. 
<laughs> well, if you got the other two guys, but you know, then <laughs> yeah, if you're by yourself, you're kind of screwed. Look, we yeah, got it. We got a good team here. We have you throwing the tomahawks. We have John <laughs> with like just a big axe to take the heads off, and then oh, I'll yeah. do the the bow. Always you know, effective. I'll do the archery Legolas style and Lego there Ashley. Go. There's this, you know, there's Lego Ashley. There. It just Lego sounds Ashley. like a Lego Ashley. So Lego like, Ashley, I see this whatever. Little Lego Ashley figure with an archery. <laughs> right. Yeah, nice. I, I, I kind, of, I kind of like fire, so I think I'll kind of stick with some Molotovs. Maybe I'll, I'll take the oh, axes, nice. but I'll take some fire. No, you got to dream you bigger. Go. You need like one of those big ass fire guns. <laughs> a flamethrower. Hell yeah. Yes, flamethrower. That. Yeah. All right. Sorry, I'm I'm I mean, if you could get your hands on them, I mean, there's only like five in existence now. So get one <laughs> made. Big. Dream big, baby. So <laughs> do it. Homemade. DIY. Oh, <laughs> we probably yeah, would not be the throwers. first people to look up how to make a flamethrower. <laughs> probably. Not. I know. Zombie apocalypse happens. There's like 90 people with flamethrowers. It's like, oh, we're crap. ready. Yo, who's like, laughing now, so motherfuckers? Because right. when we thought you were unique, right. <laughs> just like everybody else. That's when you do like a double barrel flamethrower or some shit. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> mind you, you guys are all like burning everybody down. Ashley's kind of like, there's nobody for me to shoot my arrow. They're all burning. <laughs> They're all burning. They're all burning. <laughs> They're all burning. I can't shoot my arrow, then it'll melt, and then I waste it. <laughs> No, what you get is a flamethrower with a crossbow on top, so it's just pew, 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 as the flames are going. Ooh, there you go. Okay. Right? Nice. See, look, you gotta you gotta dream big <laughs> in your apocalypse. <laughs> Tony Stark it up, make it. Right? You gotta build it. Build I'm it, about it. it. Oh it. man, that's oh. funny. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go to a cave in the Middle East and force myself to build it like Tony Stark. There you go. <laughs> there you go. You're like. You know, you put yourself in there, right? It's like, yeah, I know, but I need to create this thing to escape when the zombies come. Like, all right, this guy's just crazy. Let's just leave him in there. You know, we'll which actually, right. which which begs this, the question of speaking of like Tony Stark and like, let's think about the Iron Man suit. Why in all these zombie movies have people not created like the just suits bite proof, like just leather up, like full slave suit if you have to, like go BDSM, mm. wear that full suit. No human <laughs> teeth are biting through that. Like even if you're a zombie, you're not it, really you're gonna bite through that. <laughs> yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer's That's Catwoman true. had it right. So there you go. There Ain't you nobody go. biting that. Or just walk around in those like dog training suits. Yeah. The first right? thing just you need to do like, is go to like those Planet of Holly or what are they called? I don't even remember. The old school adult shops. Anyways, go to oh, an man. adult shop, swarm the adult shop, go leather in and just up. leather up. Leather it's like up. dodgeball. And you were talking about <laughs> daddy earlier. G- you get to see a bunch of gimps walking around like what is <laughs> But they're wow, alive, the right? The apocalypse came and everybody turned into just look. Know. Look at that! It's a leather Legolas. Oh, <laughs> She's not leaving the Legolas thing alone. I dig it. I dig it. I'm just saying, like, why have we not seen that? Like, everywhere in every like, people have all these contraptions and they like super. Like, I don't even know, like, souped up their cars and these zombie mobiles and, like, full-blown stuff. And everybody's just walking around with their necks exposed and their arms exposed. And everything's, like, free, free out. And, like, wouldn't the first thing you do is say, you know what, I should cover up. Right, because care of funny first. Like, yeah, yeah, which is kind of funny. Like, uh, like especially, um, what, what was the, the, the this movie that just came out recently? It was, um... The, the 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 Zack Snyder one they were in Vegas that that zombie flick oh yeah they, I they dropped like the a, it. like last year uh, Army of the Dead Army of the yeah, Dead yeah that's it um I mean you know but Batista's a big dude Dave Batista's a big dude yeah but, I mean he was and he's a, clearly like a all out soldier guy but the guy's also walking around in a t shirt it's like bro <laughs> you you ask him for them to take exactly. a side out of that forearm man. <laughs> That's just like, like that, what's gonna happen. Hungry, that's like, come on. I know it's like right? I'm hungry like, and all they're envisioning is like a big floating turkey leg. Like really, man? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of yeah. like, you know, your arms just look like some just like you're giving them like these big pieces of meat that they can yeah. aim for. It's like what are you doing? If they could drool, they'd doing? be drooling. You can feed a you're family right? with that bicep. 
So. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, dude, throw on like a flak jacket. Nobody needs to see your muscles in this. The zombies don't care. They're just hungry. You're showing them the buffet. <laughs> They're just <laughs> put it away. Put it away. <laughs> Maybe it works the same way. Maybe if you like completely covered up, they're like, well, there's no flesh on that thing. That's right. Fuck around. that guy. Nah, I'm not interested. That, that thing is covered up. I don't know what's under there. It's true. You know? I mean, because they're that dumb. If zombies are work. like brain dead, you know, it just. It's just a moving right. tree. Can know. you imagine how disappointing that would be in a zombie movie where where that's how they get away with it? They're kind <laughs> of like, guys, up. if we just if we just cover ourselves up, you know, they'll never attack us. And it's like, oh, okay. Finn, end of movie. Yeah. Roll credit. So it's like, oh shit. All There's right. probably some adult movie that out was there easy. though with like the gimps during a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> They're the only oh, ones sure. who survived. They like there left you the you know the dungeon, the private club, and zombies are out, and it's like they're not attacking us. You guys want to go Leather home? They're clad, <laughs> depraved men and women walking around. Daddy choker, you know, dominate, on. dominatrixes are walking around, yelling at the yelling at their at, at, at their sub at their submissives. It's like, okay, dog, go go, go kill that zombie. Yes, mistress. <laughs> yes, mistress. <laughs> like, wow. Get him, like, pet. Wow. <laughs> the zombie apocalypse created a very weird society. <laughs> At least women will run sh- run shit, so that's cool. It yeah, doesn't that make sense though? The only ones that would survive would oh, be yeah. like the heathens. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh we, for sure. Absolutely. We are survivors. Yeah, All right. <clears throat> All right, Beyonce. Yeah. Don't call me that. <laughs> um <laughs> What would be another film favorite of yours? Another horror film. Spooky season. Another good one. Um, I, I, be, I think this one was classified as horror, probably more like a thriller horror, um, was a Spanish flick called uh, Kidnapped. I don't or think I've Sequestrados seen that one. is what it was called in Spanish. Um, but in, in, in English, it was called Kidnapped. And uh, that movie was intense that was an intense movie if it kind of feels like a it's like a better version of uh the strangers okay it's like a better version of that i don't think i've seen that one it was good it was on netflix years ago and i forgot who told me about it somebody told me about it they were like yeah you got to check this out and i think they redid it uh like they i think they did an american version and obviously it was no good um so if you watch the original spanish one like that one was really in, like pff, i was very surprised it was actually a lot a lot better than i thought it was um there's not a lot that happens in terms of the gore but it's a very edge of your seat kind of feeling throughout the entire movie and then the end just makes you go oh so it's one of those kind of movies how did i miss it yeah, it, like, well, it, it's 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 an ending kind of like the mists ending. Oh, okay. like it's like that. Like it ends and you're just like, oh no! Like you want to run out screaming, saying, "Why did it end this way? Why? Christmas. I love it so much!" You I know? love so it. it so it's much. that kind of ending. I love that it kind of so ending. much. It's so good. I hate everything about it in a great way. So yeah, it kind of feels like that. So you have like the you have the Latin background. Did you watch on Netflix The Old Ways? No, I did not. Okay. I think you might like that one. Um, Yeah? Yeah, and I was actually really impressed. Almost the Mm. entire film takes place in one room, which you have to have a strong-ass story if you're going to take place in one room. Yeah. Like, there's some other... Scenes that are done outside of the, you know, the room, but most of it takes place inside of just the one room. And it's, um, mm. it's basically about this uh, journalist and she goes down to, I believe it's Mexico, to research this area that's supposed to be having, it's supposed to have a lot of urban legends about like mm. de- demons in the, in the caves and like um, rituals and stuff like that. And, but she ends up being kidnapped or not even kidnapped held by this Mm. local uh, medicine woman like this curandera and Uh she's being like locked in this room and they're like nope you have an evil entity inside of you we can't we can't let you leave until it's out 
And she's like, you're nuts. You're psychotic. And let me go. I'm a journalist. People are going to come looking for me. And they are like the things they put her through. Um, oh. It's just like you wonder, like, are they messed up or is just she really has something inside of her? And so it's just it's nuts. And her cousin who is like who lives there is the one that took her because she found her passed out at the caves and took her to the Gurandera what? lady. And she's helping. And she's just like, you got to let me go when her cousin won't, like, address her. And it's like, oh, man. Oh, that's screwed up. Oh, that sounds really cool. Yeah, it's pretty wicked. But, like, for anyone who Mm. has – and, like, it's anyone – I will say, even if you're not um, Hispanic – people would still enjoy it. It's still really well done. Interesting. The story is awesome. The effects and, like, it's just – it's great. Anybody that has a Latin background, I think it's extra terrifying Mm. because especially if you did have relatives who believe some of those older traditional beliefs, you're like, oh, shit. Hitting, hitting, hitting a little too close to home there. Hitting some buttons. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. No, I hear that. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing that I, that I will say is that international horror has always kind of intrigued me more um, because they, they were never scared to really push the envelope and they were never scared to kill their protagonists. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I like a story where you kind of feel like they may not make it. I hate the idea of watching a horror film and being able to be like, that's the survivor right there. I don't want to be able to be, be able to point that person out. You know, I mean, it, it even became a horror movie trope. The virgin always survives. You know, like it, it was that obvious. You know what I'm saying? Well, we're all like, fucked. I, I didn't... Oh, <laughs> literally. Oh, that's <laughs> I right. was dead a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> I'm He's a screwed. zombie. <laughs> Shoot with your arrows. <laughs> Unless the zombie is wearing a gimp outfit. Ah, ah, see, ah, ha, ha. Ashley's eyes. I saw the. the she didn't think clicking. about that. No, I think she enjoyed the thought though. She's gonna. No, make I was that thinking. Movie, I was thinking more <laughs> along the lines of the like, if if you have these group of people fighting zombies, they've got their gimp outfits on. They're probably still having fun. <laughs> They're like Probably. our world doesn't stop. We're still, we're still, we're killing zombies, uh, and we're still oh having God, fun. Can you imagine that? Like a zombie like grabs him by the arm. They're like, yeah, harder. Get I'm it? Like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, harder. The zombies trying to bite them. Get it? Get it? Come on, harder. Like, yeah, you bite me. Bite me, you little bitch. <laughs> Are you even trying? <laughs> What's happening? Mama like, tries I gotta, harder I gotta than I got to go. <laughs> no. I was like, what is happening here? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> See, exactly. Part, part horror, part softcore porn. Enjoy. There you go. Yeah. Right. Isn't there that like what makes the best movies? Hellraiser? Come on. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> a, little, a little bit of this. A little, a little bit, bit of that. that. You know? <laughs> Why not? Everybody's happy. There you go. It's like, I'm not into horror movies, but I love leather and lace. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the lace. Like, We're just okay. sticking with the leather and the spikes. I know, right? So, um, I have a special place in my heart for leather and chains. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, boy, have I got the movie for you. <laughs> <laughs> I have just the movie for you, for your... I, I feel know. like that's what we need. People who aren't into horror. It's like, just tell me what you're into. I'll point you to the right horror movie for you. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Go by their interests uh-huh. and then see if you can pinpoint. I mean, there's a. I, I'd say there's a horror movie out there for everybody. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Even if it is yeah, Hocus yeah, yeah. Pocus, <laughs> <laughs> or Scooby Doo right? Zombie Island, or Scooby Doo's hey, Mel- Zombie Island. <laughs> <laughs> this you is not know? a zombie film, Daddy. Uh, <laughs> damn it! It counts. It counts. It counts. <laughs> <laughs> totally counts. I'm scared. <laughs> You're scared. I'm freaked out. I'm scared. We're all scared. Freaking out, man. <laughs> Freaking <So>. out, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> but you know, I think um there are you know, culturally speaking, we're just talking about what's going on in the world, the climate, because we've had people come on and talk about this is what's going on during that time that really caused mm. these movies to be created so they carry an mm. extra punch. And I feel like that's why we get a lot of really stellar, spot-on, terrifying horror from international places because mm-hmm. it is a little bit more gruesome. Like, the climate is a little bit more yeah. angry and scary and yeah. oppressed and suppressed. And, like, there's a lot going on. So I feel like their movies For hit sure. harder. 
And yeah, I mean, they, they, yeah. So, some filmmakers have found an interesting way to have a, a kind of political, social, whatever you want to call it, commentary on life within a horror movie aesthetic, which is really cool. <clears throat> I think a movie that did that really well was uh, uh, in Spanish. It was uh, it was called El Hoyo. Mm -hmm. um, but on Netflix, it was called The Platform. I don't know if you guys saw that one. Mm -mm. Um, but The Platform uh, was such a great... I mean, that, that it was total social commentary. How the uh, uh, Did you guys see that one at all? Mm -mm. It was on my list, and uh, I, I know somebody I know has watched it and talked to me about it, so I know a little bit about it. Yeah, for me, though, I don't mind when the symbolism is obvious, when the message is obvious. I don't mind it. As long as the story is solid, as long as the visuals are solid. Like, if if, if it right. feels like I'm in a moment in a story and I don't feel disconnected, I don't care if the message is obvious. Let it be obvious. Yeah, obvious, don't beat me over the head with it. Like, the, like there's a difference. Like, there is a line there. Absolutely. Um, the platform d the platform absolutely does not go, go past that line. It's it's obvious, but it, it has a story to tell, uh, which is great. So you could be totally oblivious to its symbolism and still enjoy what the movie's about. But if, you, if you're a little bit more savvy um, and you kind of understand what they're talking about, you, you can appreciate that added layer to the movie. Um, which, which I think is really cool, but yeah, it's, yeah, definitely, definitely worth a watch. It's, it's very interesting. Yeah. I think all of Romero's films, you know, all the zombie films were symbolism for social commentary and that, oh, that's fine. Yeah. especially land of the dead. They went very obvious right. with that one. And yes. I was, like you said, it wasn't so over the head. They were like, oh, okay, no. I get it. But it was to me, I know it's zombies and I'm not really a zombie person, but <laughs> I love the way he puts messages into his zombie movies. Ash watching the movie as she sharpens her eyebrows like, <laughs> like everything's here be we okay. go. Everything's gonna be okay. I'm ready, motherfuckers. <laughs> well, come and get me. Everything's gonna be fine. Where's my gimp suit? <laughs> everything's gonna be fine. She's got that one zombie she's watching in the movie. She's like, I'm coming for you, fucker. I'm getting you first. <laughs> You look like an ex. You're first. <laughs> I swear to Christ, if I see something like this, he's going first. I'm shooting him in the balls. No, I'm kidding. Uh, there you go. You're Whoa. not kidding, though. That's the thing. <laughs> kidding, not kidding. Hashtag not kidding. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm just going to have to get a list from you of international films that I need to watch because. Yeah. 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 I, I definitely gravitate to the international stuff more. Um, I feel like the Spaniards did really, really well with, with horror. I mean, it also helps because I can watch it in its, in its original language and like, and, and really see what it's about. Cause sometimes the translations aren't not about. that they're off, but you do lose some, there is something that you lose in translation. Um, so that's actually really nice being able to watch them in, in, in Spanish and really kind of admiring. I think the first movies that I did that with where, uh, I started, I purposely made the effort to watch it in Spanish was the rec movies. Mm -hmm. Um, those were the first ones that I was kind of like, all right, you know what? Like I put it on, it started off in English and I was like, you know what? Let me put it in Spanish. Let me hear it in its original and see what it, uh, how it is. And ever since then, if it's a Spanish horror flick, I like I I take I take the English dubbing out. I'm like you know, no shade to my dubbing voice actors because I'm one of them. But <laughs> <laughs> yo hablo español, so I'm gonna watch it in Spanish. <laughs> so I'm gonna watch it in Spanish, and it really it it really adds to it. In the old ways, they do. I mean, it's predominantly in English, but there are. But when she's interacting. With the curandera right. and the um, yeah. assistant, they are speaking in Spanish, cool. and they, you know, they automatically dub it in, and right, right, right. Um, it's just part of the, you know, titles in the film. But mm. I, I'm with you, where like all, you automatically read it because it's on the screen, but I'm yeah, also listening, and I knew a few times that pa I paused because I'm like. Wait, that's that's not what she said. Yeah, it's like that's kind of what she said. It's a but that's not actually idea, what she but said. But there's yeah. more to that. There's more to that context. Like she said so accurate. much yeah. more, and right. so it's just like, huh? Right. And to me, it's like, oh man, if you could have just expo like hit pause and explain that more to people that don't speak that language, and say, look, yeah. that statement she just made <clears throat> carries a lot more. Like, mm -hmm. yes, it's 
kind of what that's what basically what she said but the context carries so much more and so it hits harder yeah for sure but yeah and and as speaking as somebody who has dubbed stuff from spanish to english there is a reasoning for those for those uh, changes a lot of those changes are actually are, are actually done on the fly um, while they're being recorded, sometimes that's when they actually change what the line says. It, more often than not, it's a timing issue because if you said exactly what the person said, like full on translated, sometimes it's too many words. And because they're speaking in their own colloquialism and because it's being translated, it's not necessarily the way we speak. When it's rewritten, it's written into an American colloquialism. So that's why it's always a general idea of what they're saying and sometimes not absolutely 100% translated because while it would make more sense to be absolutely translated, it either doesn't, it either wouldn't make sense colloquially or it just doesn't fit in the amount of time that the actor has to actually speak the line. Before it's to the next. Yeah, so after having done it, I was kind of like, now I understand. Okay. Forgiven. <laughs> forgiven. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, now it's like, okay, all international movies, you're all forgiven now. Because <laughs> right. now I get it. <laughs> Fine. I'll be less of an asshole about it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't know. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> I don't mind being that asshole, man. Like, I Do don't it. mind. Yeah, like, fine. for certain things. Like, I I, I mean, not? I am, but I'm not. When it comes to translation, I'm, I get it because it's really hard sometimes to get the full context in that small amount of time. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. But can we talk about on these streaming networks when you type in horror and you're going through the list and it's like, hold the fuck up. That's not a horror movie. Oh, God. <laughs> when it gets miscategorized and it's like. Yeah, that's the problem. I feel like, I feel like uh, you guys ran out of shit. You guys are reaching. You're you guys reaching. have no, no real horror catalog and you're like, this is kind of scary. Like, <laughs> his face is scary. All right. Django could be scary. But there's blood in it. He's like, a lot no, of it's gore. not. That's not what. <laughs> you close your eyes, it's scary. It. Oh. Yeah, let's Gosh. stop it. You stop that right now, Netflix. Or you just get like trash. Because yeah. I've seen even Maleficent, like the Angelina Jolie G- one, categorized yeah. on there, and I'm like, what the hell? Horrifying Is it just because she looks like a little? I don't, I don't even know. Like, horrifying to children. It has scary images <laughs> to, to three year olds. Like yeah. what? It's the scary images, guys. Come on. <laughs> the scary noises she makes when she turns into a dragon. I don't know. I haven't watched it's it. Those, so. It's those. It's those creepy, sharp cheekbones that she has. That's scary enough for me. I don't want to get cut. <laughs> Yeah, they probably go, didn't right. have to do too many prosthetics on that either. She's got probably killer not. bones. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is true. So those things are like <laughs> real sharp. She's her own weapon in the zombie apocalypse. She just shakes your face around, and stabs yes. people. <sighs> well, I got I got to ask you guys a question. When when do you remember watching your first horror movie? Like, what was your first foray into horror? How old were you? If you could remember the situation, like what what was it? Like what started the itch? I was two. I don't remember it, Dang. but I know that I was two because my mom had shown me the Lost Boys when I was young. <laughs> wow! And um, I for years, like you know, kids nowadays are like, I'm Elsa, and they go around like, no, I was walking around introducing myself as a toddler. I'm Star. And she thought it was cute to like, to, hey, hey, ask her who she is. Ask her what her name is. And her friends would ask, hey, what's your name? Star. I Stop seriously, it. like, yeah, I was star. So. Did you always have like Tim Capello in the back of your head, like always. singing, I still believe. And did you have that? <laughs> Shaking his oily buff body. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, and and like my mom does that for all the kids in our family. Though she will show them horror movies young, and I'm like, you cannot do that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna fuck up these children. She's like, you're fine, and I'm like, but am I? <laughs> <laughs> am I really fine? Yeah, right. you go. If they're not scared of this, then they're ready for life. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and I, I honestly, because Blockbuster was the thing then, like, as I got older and she would have, like, these little, like, get-togethers with her friends at the house, she's like, you hang out in my room, you can watch whatever, you know, horror movies, but the deal is you have mm. to go to bed in your own room and you have to cover your eyes during any inappropriate adult scenes. And I'm like, all right, Mom. Okay. Okay, so I'd say those are respectable. Those are respectable rules for real. And so I would go to Blockbuster and pick out like six six movies, and because that was my that was my thing for the that's weekend. Cool. And yeah, and then that's, that's what I would do. And I had like a horror like in the horror section. I had like I would mm-hmm. slip a piece of paper in where I left off, and on the shelves, and then just like go through, go through, and then pick something off the new wall because you know they were more expensive than the ones in the shelves. Oh, you're so it's one like of I'd those. One on the wall. Okay. <laughs> slipping but, the papers in I used to work at Blockbuster so we had people like that I'm like what the fuck is this paper and I'd take it oh, out like <laughs> oh. you ruined our, our method that's their there's problem. like an 11 year old saying like man I saw Pet Cemetery like four times or <laughs> damn, what the F damn what's going on <laughs> keep watching this stupid car movie I don't want to see this car movie anymore I got something for you mommy like fuck you bitch <laughs> tired of hearing about this Christine bitch just take her I to the junkyard already. <laughs> I could have swore I made it past C. Turn that bitch into parts. Come on. <laughs> and does that mean she haunts all the cars she's put into? There you go. Ooh. <laughs> That's the sequel that never happened. Uh, I don't think it needed to happen. No, it did How didn't. many basket cases are there? <laughs> like, damn. I mean, they got a lot of baskets. What the fuck? God, there's always this weird creepy thing. I think I've seen this movie like eight times. Is somebody moving my paper? Right. Shit. Stuck watching basket games over and over again. <laughs> Cause John keeps moving their paper. I know it's true. <laughs> they're stuck in a they're stuck in a ba- stuck in, in a pumpkin basket. head time warp. Oh, but I would I be okay with that. Pumpkin head over and over again. I love pumpkin head. I have a pumpkin head T-shirt. <laughs> that, was a good one. that was a fun one. That was uh, a fun one. I like that one a lot. And because I did alphabetically though on the, the shelves. Mm. I didn't skip, so I was young watching some ones I shouldn't have been watching, like Hellraiser and <laughs> Pumpkinhead and Nightmare on Elm Street, and I was young, and I'm like, Mom, Mama said I have to sleep in my own room, but I couldn't help it. I'd watch it, and I'd be terrified in my own fucking room, like, I gotta power through this, because oh, I want to be able to rent more next week. <laughs> <laughs> I could do no, it. I hear you, man. Never yeah. go to sleep. And I wonder yeah. why I'm an insomniac. <laughs> uh, what about you, man? What was your what was your first foray? Into uh, same as Ashley, I'm pretty sure I was two. I don't know for sure, but um, American Werewolf in London. Ooh. My mom oh, and my dad they wow. were married at that point. I guess I don't know, but um, whatever. They uh, couldn't find a babysitter, so guess who had to come along? Little old Johnny here. So <laughs> get uh, out of here! Yeah. You saw it in the theater. In the theater, yeah. What? And then I remember watching it like my my grandparents had like this home projector type thing and they somehow got a copy of it later on and we'd watch it downstairs in their basement. And so, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Um, So my mom kind of introduced me to that one. Not really purposely, but, you know, whatever. Um, And then growing up, my aunts would always take us to watch movies that we weren't supposed to. Of course, my grandma thought Ghostbusters was too scary for us. Sorry, Graham. Love you. But (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, no, I remember, like Ashley, going to the video stores, staying at cousins' houses, renting all the scary movies because that's just what you do. You stay up all night and you watch Freddy Krueger. You watch Halloween. You watch all of those damn things. And, yeah, so it's pretty fun. Nice. That's (laughs) awesome. Got to give shout outs, shout outs to the moms. Right. <laughs> that was one of the one things I hated, though. My mom let me watch all these. And, but my friends were not allowed to. Most of my friends, the parents are like, they can't watch more than PG, OK? Where they're not PG-13 Whips. allowed yet. <laughs> and it's like, Whips. so uh, what are, what are we going to watch, Bambi? I don't understand. Like no. <laughs> PG-13 didn't exist when I was younger. It was a thing. Uh, oh. So, yeah. So, I keep forgetting. I mean, funny. you're not that much younger than me, but you're still younger than me. That's just funny that, like, PG-13 wasn't a thing when I was younger. And it was, like, just G, PG, and then R, barely. But, yeah. R. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Yeah, what about you, so Rob? Cool. What cool. was your first foray um, into it? I, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if my, you know, lament configuration into horror... Um, 
was around that age. I mean, that I can remember, I was like, I remember like being four or five ish. And I remember very clearly watching two movies. And these, I remember watching one because my mom, because I asked my mom to watch it because I just saw it and it looked cool, which was the Toxic Avenger. And we watched that one together. And she didn't ask me to close my eyes, but I couldn't question when adult themes happened. So it was just like, if it happens, you just stare straight at the TV. Don't make mention of it. Don't acknowledge it. And just wait till it's over. And once it's over, you're back in the movie and that's it. It's like it never happened. <laughs> So that's kind of how that happened. She, and she didn't say anything. It was just known. We had a, we had a silent agreement. It was like don't you're gonna see it. shit don't that you shouldn't see that you shouldn't see, and uh, don't ask about it. Done. And then um, and then I remember uh, uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Mm-hmm. Uh, Friday Thirteenth Two, I believe it was the second one. Um, that 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 one uh, she picked out. And we saw it together. And um, yeah, and then from there, like, it was same as you, Ash, we would go to, we didn't have a Blockbuster. We had a West Coast video. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and uh, we used to go there and, you know, she would go check out the action adventure stuff and I lived in the horror. And that's that's pretty much where I picked out what I wanted to see. Um, no Sesame Street or kids stuff for me. It was horror movies and action. In, Don't follow in, that in bird. 90s huh? action. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. I mean, I don't think I saw Sesame Street until I like, like actually saw it until my my kids were watching it. Like that's when I first started watching Sesame Street. Um, but yeah, no, I never grew up on it. I was I always watched like full on movies. Like I learned to like speak watching Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, I go. love Axel Foley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like my mom, she was just like, yeah, you were just like a little like a little toddler. You would watch the movie. You'd take the VHS, you'd hit rewind to the beginning, and then you'd press play and you'd watch it again. Yep. And she said that she she got sick of the movie because like I would watch it like three or four times in a row. <laughs> so that, yeah, go figure. Do you know they're making another Beverly Hills Cop? Yes, they are. It's I'm, been too long, but I'm, I'll watch it. I love, yeah, I glad, love I'm, Axel. I'm going to watch so it. I have to yeah. watch it. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna watch it, but I'm, I'm 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 hesitant about what may come of it. Man, this has been fun. I can't believe time like super flew by, and we went everywhere. Like I know we were All gonna talk it. about spooky, but I love that we deviated to film because ultimately we're just geeks yeah. of film. Like that just well, yeah. we love film, and I love having people on that have that same dorky passion for it because yes. it's just, it's being able to go in because usually, like you said, you read the situation it's like, oh my god, this person is, their eyes are glossing over, they are not about that life, so it's yeah. nice to have people to talk to about it. Yeah, because I mean, you know, I, I feel like the horror movie fan is different than like the movie fan. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can't say there's somebody that's like, I'm an action movie fan. Oh, did you see this action movie? Like, no, like there's people that enjoy them, but they don't necessarily have a passion for them like horror like horror fans do. Like we, we like we actually have a passion for it, you know, and every rendition of it. And we and and because there's so many different you know, technically lanes of horror because you have your psychological ones, you got your sci-fi ones, you got your kind of supernatural ones, zombies is its own living vein, you know, like there's so, yeah. there's the vampire ones. The monsters, so it's like you could even uh, everything. be, yeah, like you could be fans of a specific type of creature and find a slew of movies that are, you know, that are lined up behind it. And I think that's so awesome. Like, I don't think there's any other genre that really kind of has that much, you know, like that, that much swing in terms of like what it is that you're interested in or what it is that, that, you know, that scares you. It's like, Oh, you know what? Ghosts don't really scare me. I'm not into that. I'm a paranormal activity. Not that, not that great. Oh, so you like psychological? Cool. Cause there's tons of those that'll just really mess with your head, you know? Or vice versa. And it's kind of like, no, nah, I'm not about that. I'm like vampires. It was like, all right, cool. Well, don't watch Twilight. Why? But those aren't vampires. This instead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, but like, it's like, there's good movies that you can watch that are vampire movies. You know what I'm saying? That aren't mainstream esque. That would still scratch that itch. Um, so I, 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 I think I appreciate that. We do have a pretty unique genre. 
Like, like you said, yeah, you totally. don't go into action, and it's totally. like the type to with like all the subcategories. And I like too that when we do categorize, like we as a fandom, like as fans, a community, we subcategorize the genre, but that doesn't mean we mm-hmm. separate it. It's not like, well, you're only right. a zombie fan or you're only a vampire. Like you said, right. we know our genre, and it's like, oh, you yeah, don't like sure. that? Okay, but you might like this, and then give a list of, you know, we do it to kind of help iterate, uh, you know, help people with their experience. Like, oh, yeah. You like yeah, doll films? Sure. Well, you're going to like this. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. I don't like doll films, but. <laughs> there you go. But and, and, that, and that's the beauty of it. Like, you can say you don't like doll, doll specific horror films and still be a horror fan. Yep. You know, you could be somebody who doesn't like zombie movies because maybe you just don't think they're interesting. But you can still be a horror fan because you like this kind of horror. And I think that's so cool is that you can be a horror fan and still have preferences. You don't have to like all of it. You know what I mean? There are some that maybe go a little too far in your mind. Or there's some that you're like, eh, it's a little too tame. You know what I mean? So, like, there's there's something in there for everybody. And I, I think that's what's so awesome about the horror movie genre. You know? I'm so glad you were able to come on, Rob. Is there anything you'd yeah, like to promote? Any projects or any way that people can kind of... Follow what you're doing and your journey in the awesome world of Rob Moreira. Yeah, I'm pretty easy to follow. Uh, if you just uh, Google Rob with two B's, Moreira, M-O-R-E-I-R-A, uh, you'll see I'm like the first four you know, pages of Google, so I'm pretty easy to find. But uh, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. I tend to post different things on both, so I keep it pretty interesting depending on where you're following me at. Um but yeah, I mean, I'm kind of all over the place. Uh, you know, just keep keep an eye out. Sometimes I work on stuff that I can't talk about, so that's always that's always tricky. <laughs> Whatever's cool and new, like I can't talk about yet. But <laughs> but at the moment, I'm doing I'm on Yu Gi Oh. So if anybody's an anime, you know, an anime fan, Yu Gi Oh Sevens on Hulu. I'm oh, nice. I'm I'm there. Which character so are you? Are you, as, uh, are you multiple characters? Professor Diggs. He's a dinosaur expert. Nice. <laughs> yeah. The dream job. Yeah, and I do show up as another character, but his episodes haven't dropped yet. Oh, so we can't talk about that. Not yet. So anyone that wants to know, where have I heard Rob's voice? He has actually been on quite a few commercials. You don't even realize that is Rob's voice. So check out his website. He's got links there for the different commercials he's done. And you're going to listen and be like, oh, shit. That yep, is know, his I voice. I did that earlier. I was like, oh, okay. I remember that commercial. <laughs> I know I that, that voice. I was like, motherfucker. All right, got it. Yeah. <laughs> now I know why <laughs> we got wrong. along. Because I'm like, I've heard that voice somewhere. There's something right. familiar about you. So It's like, there's something about you makes me want to buy men's cologne. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. <laughs> so odd. That was, so odd. yeah. Like, I talk to you, and it's not that I feel comfortable, but I really feel secure, like, <laughs> specifically cyber safe. Like, do I have to do like, Norton, like Norton antivirus safe. Do you do the voice of Norton antivirus? <laughs> I feel cyber safe. I love that. Actually. Cologne and cyber safety. There you go. My claims to fame. Uh, I think there's more than that out there on your awesome <laughs> yeah. resume. IMDB that oh shit. Rob is amazing. <laughs> I'm around. <laughs> I'm around. He gets around. No, no He's shaming like the wind. Him. He's everywhere. I'm around. Do a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. All right, Rob. Thank you so much for coming on. Awesome. I appreciate you yeah, joining us. Hell yeah! Thank you. Thank you for having me. You guys are awesome. And uh, I mean, a chance to talk about you know movies for an hour and a half. Yeah. Sign me up. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have you give me that list of international films, and then we're going to watch them. We'll have you come back on, and we'll talk about those (gasps) movies. Oh, if you're cool yeah, with that. That would be so cool. Yeah, Heck yeah. Yeah, just send no, us for sure. like the list of the ones you were telling us about and even some extra ones that you think we might be into. Yeah, yeah. We'll watch it and we'll we'll do a part two and talk about those. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I love it. Yes. No, that, I think that would be really cool. Sweet. That would be really cool. Yes. Hell yeah. All right, John. Sweet. Bring us home. All right. Thank you again, Rob. This has been absolutely fantastic. Anytime, like Ashley said, we can sit here and talk movies and like you said, even... We can talk movies, geek out, and be just who the fuck we are. It's always a great yes. time. And uh, yes. thank you, everybody, for listening to this episode of Three Haunted Podcast with your host. I'm John Thomas. I'm Ashley Lunar Goddess. 
And if you have any episode suggestions, questions, comments, or concerns, maybe, I don't know, uh, please feel free to email us at 300podcast at gmail.com. And if you haven't done so already, please like, follow, and subscribe to all of our social media. You don't want to miss one crazy moment. I think there may be concerns on this one. We were talking about Gimps and Gore, baby. This is going to be <laughs> one of those. You guys need help. <laughs> Until next time.